Hello everyone, you are watching Sahib Academy. If you like our videos, then please subscribe to our channel and also hit the bell icon for the regular updates and also follow us on Instagram, Sahib Academy. Now let's go to the video. Hi everyone, today in this video we are going to discuss about this interesting topic of financial management, Islamic finance. Now this is a very interesting and very non-conventional topic of financial management because here you are discussing about a religion and a different culture right so it's very interesting to understand that yeah how does the islamic finance differs from the conventional finance yeah how is it different that's the important thing you have to understand and to get that perfectly clear you have to be perfectly clear with the principles of islamic finance okay and that's what we are going to focus in this video and this video is relevant for everyone okay whether you are an acca student ca student or cpa student this video is for you okay don't worry so see here Islamic finance now the name suggests itself it's entirely based upon the religion of Islam yeah so see here Islamic finance rests on the application of the Islamic law or rules of Sharia yeah now what is Sharia Sharia simply in Arabic means Islamic law okay Islamic law or Sharia now how does this come into existence see Sharia has come into existence Islamic law from these two sources okay Holy Quran the Holy Book of Islam yeah the Word of God and the sayings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, this is also called as Hadith in Arabic. Okay, so these two things, you know, has formed the Islamic law. And the Islamic financial system is entirely follows the rules of Sharia, the Islamic law. Clear? You clear with that? Yeah? Okay. Then the Islamic finance concept, you know, it can be traced back to about 1400 years ago when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born. Okay. Since then, the Islamic finance concept has come into existence. But its recent history, you can trace it back to the 1970s when Islamic banks were launched in Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, Bahrain, all these Gulf rich countries, okay, all these oil rich and gas rich countries. Fine. Now, recently in 2020, it is now estimated that worldwide around US 2 trillion of assets are managed under the rules of Islamic finance, okay. So this was the brief idea about the Islamic finance, okay, and the, about Islam also, right? Now the main thing we have to come to principles of Islamic finance. Now this is very important for you to understand properly. See here we have these principles, mainly these, you know, six principles of Islamic finance. The first one is paying or charging interest. Now according to this principle of Islamic finance, interest is completely forbidden. You can't pay or charge interest. All right, Islam considers lending with interest payment as an exploitative practice that only favors the lender at the expense of the borrower. So interest is strictly prohibited. It's strictly forbidden. Why is it forbidden? Because Islam believes in justice, you know, and Islam says that it is injustice with the borrower because here there is no economic, you know, economic activity. There is no asset involved. Here, what is happening? The lender is earning money on money, right? Yeah, he has lent the money to the borrower and there is no any economic activity that is happening, nothing. Yeah, it's just that he has borrowed the money and the time is passing by and this guy, only the borrower is suffering. Yeah, only the borrower is suffering. Yeah, there's no any real economic activity involved in this. It's just money changing the hand, that's all. There is no any asset involved. That's why it's an exploitative practice and only the borrower suffers so islam consider it is injustice with the borrower and interest is strictly prohibited in islam okay that's the main thing you have to understand okay in whatever transaction is there if there is interest it is strictly forbidden in islam clear okay that's the first principle of islamic finance then the second principle is see here investing in businesses involved in prohibited activities now i told you that islamic finance completely rests upon the application on sharia the islamic law so whatever the islam says it goes all right islam says this is not this is forbidden that's not allowed this is forbidden that's not allowed you can't do that right so that's what prohibited activities now what are those prohibited activities according to islam see here dealing the businesses which deals in alcohol drugs gambling pork yeah the restaurants which are involved in pork or you know pork and then pornography all these industries and these types of businesses are completely forbidden in islam and also the music industry and many other things are there okay or anything else that the sharia considers to be unlawful or undesirable in arabic it is called as haram okay it is called as haram fine so if your business is involved in these prohibited activities then you can't get finance from any islamic bank and all okay the islamic banks the financial institution 
cannot be involved with any businesses which deals in these prohibited activities yeah because of the sharia because of the islamic finance the principles of islamic finance right then we have the third principle here speculation now speculation is completely forbidden in islam okay speculation means what you are speculating that something will happen in future yeah something is likely to happen and because of that you are doing you know business now itself yeah in advance itself so sharia strictly prohibits that islamic law strictly prohibits any form of speculation or gambling why does it prohibit because it says that islam says that it is equal to gambling only because there is too much uncertainty involved yeah because you can't play with the lives of people yeah you can't play with the what do you say yeah the lives of people it's like gambling right it's like gambling it's too much risk is there and you already know that gambling is what it's a haram activity it's a prohibited activity in islam so it equates to gambling because of excessive risk and this is called maisir okay in arabic gambling this is called maisir speculation yeah thus islamic financial institutions cannot be involved in any contracts where the ownership of goods depends on an uncertain event in future yes that's what speculation is right you're speculating that something will happen yeah in advance itself and you're doing business now now right so the ownership of that thing will depend on future and future is very uncertain only the god knows the future yeah so because of this you know mainly if you see these two types of contracts futures contract and the option contracts yeah you can't deal in these two markets according to islam so in islamic finance these markets are completely prohibited forbidden fine futures and option markets clear speculation is prohibited and then the fourth principle is what uncertainty and risk now this principle in arabic is also called as gharar okay gharar g h a r a r okay gharar so see here uncertainty and risk it is also similar to that only speculation only but it's bit different see here the rules of islamic finance ban participation in contracts where the terms and subject matter is uncertain and it has excessive risk yes see here in islam you know as i said there is a principle of justice yeah in the beginning itself you have to be very clear what you are going to do what type of business you are going to do yeah it cannot be uncertain and un unambiguous yeah you can't have that yeah if there is a contract any business contract any financial contract then what you have to do what obligations you have to perform it should be perfectly written down and clear right so the subject matter and the term should be very clear it should not be uncertain and it should not have too much risk excessive risk yeah now normally this can be seen in the derivative contracts and also in short selling yeah so those types of contracts and these type of you know activities are completely prohibited okay because this includes a prohibition on selling something one does not own yeah you doesn't own that thing and you're selling it in advance yeah that's what happens in derivative and short selling contracts isn't it yes so it's completely prohibited okay uncertainty and risk and then the fifth principle we have here is risk should be shared yeah that's the main thing and very good thing about the islamic finance that the risk should be shared among the partners in the business okay in the you know any financial transaction in that matter in islamic finance the partners will share their profit and loss according to the part they played in the business now let's understand this properly see here now there are two people a and b now in islam no you know loan is allowed okay the a can lend the money to the b 5000 dollars yeah a has lent 5000 dollars to the b and then what will happen interest is not allowed so after some period of time b will repay the 5000 dollars back that is allowed but here we are not talking about simple loan simple a is giving loan to b or bank is giving loan to b something like that no here we are talking about wealth creation yeah finance how wealth can be created how profit and loss can happen that's what we are talking about if you are just talking about loan a giving money to b and then b giving it back that's what that's a simple loan yeah there is no wealth creation over there here what we are talking about is you know there is islamic bank yeah there is islamic bank right there is an islamic bank and you are approaching to the bank and you are saying uh, see i want to do business and i need five thousand dollars right so now the bank will lend you money you will get the money but then what will happen you will be in partnership with the bank because bank is the lender you are the borrower and you have opened a business with that money now what will happen the profit and the loss yeah the benefits as well as the risk will be shared among the bank and you yeah that's what the 
risk sharing in Islamic finances. The lender and the borrower will be treated as partners. This is the main principle. There will be risk sharing among these two people. Yeah. You can't say that, you know, only borrower will suffer or only lender will suffer. No, it doesn't happen like that. Both parties, both parties will have to share equal risk. All right. And you can't have guarantee on rate of returns. Okay. That you will get 5% no matter what happens with your business. That's like interest only. Yeah. It's similar to interest. So that's why it's completely prohibited. You can't have guarantee on rate of returns. Okay. You can't say, uh, okay, bank, you are giving me $5,000. I'm opening the business and I will pay you 10% every year. You can't say that. Okay. That, that can't, that can't happen in Islamic financial system. All right. The risk and everything, the benefits as well as the loss will be shared among the parties equally simple as that yeah very easy then what we have is wealth must be generated from legitimate trade and asset based investment see here it's very simple to understand now i don't have any you know piece of paper for that because see paying or charging interest here what i what did i say here i said that you can't use money to make money right you can't lend money to someone and then say Pay me the principal money back and also the interest yeah you can't do that in in islamic finance right so you can't do that there must be a real economic activity yeah real legitimate trade should be there something you have to sell something should be involved yeah asset based investment you can't have just money on money you can't do that yeah and risk also should be shared so this is what wealth must be generated from legitimate trade and asset based investment only in those activities the islamic banks can get involved with yeah clear those six are the principles of islamic finance yeah paying or charging interest you can't have you know you can't pay or charge the interest from the people and then some prohibited activities we saw such as gambling drugs alcohol pork pornography music industry these kind of activities yeah if any business is involved in then you can't get finance from the islamic banks it's not allowed and then speculation is my seal speculation is prohibited yeah futures contracts and option contracts are prohibited and then uncertainty and risk such as derivative contracts and short selling are prohibited because it has too much uncertainty the terms are not clear the subject matter is not clear and too much risk is there so this is also it equates to gambling right so it's completely prohibited and then risk should be shared the lender and the borrower are like partners yeah and wealth must be generated from legitimate trade and asset based investment right so these were the principles of islamic finance now in the coming video we are going to see different types of you know islamic finances okay different sources of islamic finance that's also very interesting to understand yeah okay then see you in the next video okay you have got the idea now what islamic finance is isn't it how is it different from conventional finance in conventional finance what everything is allowed here everything is allowed right yeah it's entirely opposite yeah you can pay the interest, you can charge the interest, speculation is allowed, uncertainty and risk, it doesn't matter, you can do anything you like. So this is Islamic finance because here entirely it is based upon the Sharia, the Islamic law. Whatever the Islam says, whatever the rules of Islam says, that goes. Yeah, easy, right? Okay, then see you in the next video, right? Bye.